Are you a broke loser? Do you want to stop being a broke loser? Well, buy my book on Amazon. It's $2.99 for an ebook or $9.99 for a hardback. It's called Stop Being a Broke Loser. If you buy this book, you will no longer be a broke loser. So buy it now. Welcome back, Strong Man Personal Finance. I am Christopher Bell, certified public accountant, long term bogleheaded investor author of the book, Stop Being a Broke Loser. It's on Amazon for $3. I know. Just go buy Jeremy's $20,000 course instead. And, you know, to get access to his Discord. And not a big fan of Dropbox stock. Now, in my personal life, yes, I do use Dropbox. Not very often, because I don't like to pay for it. I use, like, the free part of it. But I have used it, and I have some crap saved on there. Including some of my tax stuff. One of you clowns wants to hack me. See my taxes. But anyway, we're going to do an analysis of Dropbox. And, you know, we're going to do the eight pillars and blah, 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 blah. But the problem with this company is they're not profitable on the accrual basis of accounting. So the only way you can really do any kind of reasonable projections is by looking at free cash flow. Which, surprisingly, they do have free cash flow. And they have, they've had it pretty consistently over the last couple of years. And let's see. So I'll show you in the income statement what I'm talking about. Revenue growth has been pretty freaking good. Okay. It's it's slowing down, which I'll show you, but it's been pretty good. So 2017 revenue was $514 million. And now in 2021, it's $2 billion. That's like a 4X growth right there. Now you may be like, oh my God, they're growing so fast. Well, if you go to Morningstar and you look, you go down to growth under key ratios revenue year over year so revenue grew by 40 percent in 2016 but as you can see it's been dropping the growth has been dropping consistently every freaking quarter or year or whatever and that makes sense because you can't just grow forever all right it's possible that may that trend may change but as of right now i see decreasing growth so when you look at everything money software you need to be careful okay because you look here and you see 13%. Well, that's actually pretty good. But they don't have a 5-year or a 10-year. Since it's growing, I said revenue is going to go low assumptions, 8% per year going forward. Middle 10, high 12. So, that's the income statement. Uh, they do have a gross profit. But it looks like... I'm trying to see what's been killing their profitability. Hmm. It looks like research and development. What Once they actually slow down on research and development... It's going to be a lot easier to value the company on a uh, earning standpoint. But right now, you can only use free cash flow because they're freaking losing money. I mean, they had a loss of negative $59 million on the accrual basis of accounting in 2017. And over the last four months or four quarters, they've lost $177 million. So on the accounting basis, they're losing freaking money. Okay. On the cash basis of accounting, it's actually a little bit better. They have positive and growing cash flows from operations. That's a good thing. And they have uh, positive and growing free cash flow. So you can actually do some kind of valuation on Dropbox. This isn't like a lot of the stocks where it's just like everything's negative and it's all guesswork. And well, I think price to sales is going to be this in five years. And I think revenue is going to be this. And I think the profit margin is going to be this. It, ugh, I hate that crap. At least here you can do some kind of analysis, which I like. So, that's that. The eight pillars, I don't know why there's not enough data. I guess if the company hasn't been in operations for five years, they don't, uh, it doesn't work. Which, it's just freaking weird to me. Because, like, here you see five years of data. So, everything money's a little bit weak when it comes to, like, newer listed companies. So, I mean, like, you see the return on invested capital, okay. You see gross profit is 80%. That's pretty freaking high. But they don't have net profit yet. They don't have a profit margin because they're not profitable. That's why I'm using free cash flow. So that brings us to the stock analyzer tool. So I showed you the revenue growth. 8, 10, and 12%. Share change. So if we look at share buybacks, I said worst case they issue more shares. Probably not likely. Or they issue nothing or they buy back 2% on the best case. Now, it shows 6% for buybacks. But as you can see... From 2017 to 2018 to 2019 to 2020, they were actually issuing shares. And then only in the last year did they buy back some shares. So 
just to be safe, I said, okay, maybe they'll issue more, maybe they'll do nothing, or maybe they'll buy back more shares going forward. Who freaking knows? That's why you do these assumptions, okay? So that's my logic behind 2, 0, and negative 2, even though there's negative 6.2. You have to check all the years. Profit margin. So I, I just put negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. On the bottom, I'm not even looking at uh, the earnings valuation. I'm only using free cash flow because that's the only thing that's positive and growing, and you can have some kind of projection based on that. Free cash flow is a percentage of revenue. So over the last year, it says 28%. I put 23, 25, and 27. So let's go back to Morningstar. Cash flow, free cash flow is a percentage of sales. So here you can see 2017, okay, it's 27%. 2018 is 25, 2019 is 23 then back to 25, and then over the last four quarters, it's 32%. So it's kind of all over the place, but this range right here, this 25, 23 to 27 range seems more reasonable to me because it was pretty consistent over the last four years. Who knows? It's always good to have different assumptions, okay? And you can always make your own assumptions, but I did 23, 25, and 27. PE, you can ignore that. I was just like, whatever, I'm not looking at earnings, so I don't give a crap. Price of free cash flow, it's currently at 21. In five years, the company's going to be more mature. Growth is slowing. People aren't going to pay as much of a premium for uh, revenue growth because it's going to be a lot slower. So I said, uh, worst case, 12. High case, high of 18 price of free cash flow. So you do the analysis. The stock is trading for $32 right now. If you think the low assumptions are most accurate, to get a 15% return, the stock is a buy at $14. On the high side, it's almost a buy at $31. But that's assuming revenue growth is 12%. And they buy back shares. Free cash flow as a percentage of revenues is 27%. Price of free cash flow, 18 It's possible. I don't know. I, this stock is not, it's not the worst that I've seen. But to get a 15% return, I want... I want a better stock. I want to see a lot more green on the bottom. And I'm just looking here on the bottom three. If you want a 10% return, let's see what happens. Okay, if you want a 10% return and you believe the assumptions on the right are accurate, then you go right ahead and buy it because right now it's a buy. But I don't know why you'd want a 15% return or 10% return when you just buy a freaking index fund and not take the risk of single stock risk. So that's my thoughts. It's not horrible. You need to plug and play with your own assumptions. But there is a chance you can get a 15% return on this stock. And it's actually nice that they actually have free cash flow. So you can actually place a valuation on it. And eventually, I'm sure they will be profitable. And then at that point, it'll be a lot easier to really, you know, get a better gauge both on the accrual basis and the cash flow basis how, when to buy the stock. So that's my thoughts there. So not the end of the world. I don't know what's up with this freaking software. Like, not enough data? I mean, come on. It's been out. It's been trading for a while. But that's it. What are your thoughts? Are you in Dropbox? Did you just YOLO your life savings into it? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, tell your friends about me. You guys have a wonderful day. Choo!